Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I'm your host, Kristen Ostrander. And have you ever caught yourself saying this? I would never do that, not for any amount of money. I know there's certain jobs, certain professions where you see and you're like, oh my goodness. Like, I cannot believe that is someone's job. You know, I think of th people who like wash windows on the side of skyscrapers or, um, you know, those big giant like light posts in the on the highway where someone has to go up there and change the light bulb or change something on there, you know, these big scary things. Or those people who crawl into holes and wells and dig for things or even like have you guys ever watched like the show gold rush on gold rush they literally just although they're mining for gold and that's a very uh, amazing job to have i guess all they do all day all the time 24 7 is move dirt that's what mining is just in case anyone wanted to know um they all they do is move dirt they move dirt with big machines that's just that that's what they do and then yeah they get gold out of the ground and that's awesome and i'm very entertained by watching the show but I would not do that even for gold. I just, I just wouldn't like, it's just one of those things. So we all have these things that they, we wouldn't do, or maybe a garbage collector or, you know, something like that. Like there are jobs that are out there, professions that people do for money that some of us would never do for money, right? There's certain things that money simply will not motivate us to do. And that is, the topic today. Why money is not enough to keep you motivated. A lot of people start this start businesses start a business because they just need more money. They're like, Oh, well, I am at this job and the job you might actually like maybe a job you hate either way. Sometimes especially in tough economies right now it's a tough economy. Let's just be real. After COVID, we're still dealing with all the effects and a down economy and inflation and prices going up and all kinds of different things. So money is definitely at the forefront of everyone's mind because we have less of it because we're spending more on, on common things, groceries and gas and um, everything's costing more and things are becoming a little bit scarce because of, you know, wars overseas and all kinds of different things. So we are all affected in some way, which then puts our, our antennas up to say, okay, I need some more money, right? But it's not just heights or claustrophobia or things that would that that won't motivate you to make more money. There are things we are not doing in our business, even though we are being paid. Am I right? I mean, we do, we are making money in our business, right? Because if you're not making money in your business, you you don't have a business, you have a hobby. You have an expensive hobby. That's just the truth. Sorry that you have to hear it from me. This is my hug and slug tough love that I have for you. If you're not making money, if you are not paying yourself, if your business is not profitable, then you are just running an expensive hobby. You have tools and services and you're doing a lot of work, but you're not being paid. That's called a hobby. <laughs> and if you don't love it, why in the heck are you doing it? So that's just a little side note. But the question is why? Why isn't money enough to motivate us? Well, maybe in the beginning it is, perhaps. But why, there's things that you're putting off in your business right now. There are things you're procrastinating. And when I say you, I say me, we, we. <laughs> this is always a we, you guys. I do these podcast episodes and talk to you guys because of things I struggle with myself. And I assume that when I struggle with something that most people are at some point or will face a similar struggle. Motivation is everything, right? I mean, especially as an entrepreneur, no one is forcing you to get up and do your job today. If you worked for a boss at a pay and got a paycheck and went into work or even had to work remotely, but your, your paycheck depended on completing certain tasks and then turning in hours and getting a paycheck, are you forced? Well, no, but then that means you'll lose your job because you can't just not do it and then still get paid. So the question is why? Why don't these things on our list get done? Why do we procrastinate? Why do we put things off? Why isn't a paycheck enough to keep us consistently taking action? Y'all, here's my list right here, right? I have a list. It's not checked off. Not yet, at least. 
the truth is if I solely relied on money to motivate me, I'm going to be couch surfing far more than I'm going to be goal smashing. That's just real. Because sometimes we want something more than money. Most of the time, I will challenge you to think that most of the time we need something more than money. I mean, procrastination is what we call it, but where does this come from and how do we motivate ourselves to get past procrastination? The root of all procrastination, <laughs> I can't even say procrastination. Maybe I'm putting that off too. <laughs> the root of all of this procrastination, which we all do, is perceived protection, okay? So let's just dive into this for just a second. When we procrastinate, there are a couple of things that are happening. We do it for different reasons. And here's a couple of those reasons. We think that we're going to be protected one way or the other by our procrastination. This is like a subconscious, ha halfway conscious, subconscious decision, right? For some, the fear of success is actually what causes you to procrastinate. Procrastination gives you the illusion that you're being protected from some sort of higher expectation or greater responsibility that comes with succeeding. Let's just break that down for a second. Before you dismiss it and say, oh my gosh, no, I'm not in fear of succeeding. That's all I want to do. I want to succeed. I want. But ask yourself this question Are you afraid of greater responsibilities? Are you afraid of managing more? Have you not hired someone in your business, even though you know you need help because you're worried about training them or being responsible for paying them? That y'all is fear of success. If you're at a point where you need an employee because you cannot do it all yourself and you still have not hired one, you are procrastinating that because you're afraid of success. What actually happens if you hire someone? You're afraid of greater responsibility but it comes with success, right? Or higher expectations for you. Now you're a boss. You're not just a solopreneur. You are an entrepreneur and now you're a, someone's boss. With great power comes great responsibility, right? So the fear of success is clouded or shrouded in some of these other emotions and other things and, and, and manifests itself in these different ways. So before you say, oh no, I'm not scared of success. That's all I ever want. I call BS on myself and on you. Procrastination gives us the illusion that we're gonna somehow be protected from these higher expectations or these greater responsibilities. But what about fear of failure? This is probably more common and more easy, easily seen. Those who procrastinate because they feel, they fear failure. They try to keep themselves safe from facing their greatest potential and reaching their greatest potential by avoiding challenges and putting things off that they fear will not turn out in their favor. That is the fear of failure. You're worried that it's going to go wrong. So you don't even try. You don't even start. You just stay where you are. Now we all can fall on both of these swords at one time or another. You know, fear, fear of success, you're actually having success and then you have to take the next move in business and then you're like, oh no, fear of success. I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to have to pay people. I'm going to have to do and make different choices. I'm going to have to be more responsible at some point. Fear of everything going wrong. If you've ever failed before, hello everyone. If you have ever failed before, then you have somewhat of a trauma experience somewhere in your mind that says, oh, don't go there. Can't do that. It's going to go wrong. Remember the last time? If you ever started and stopped a diet it, like a, a million times, different ones, what's that little voice inside your head say? Oh, this didn't work last time, right? So it's not going to work this time. Or the fear of success. What happens if it does? What happens if I can't keep it up? What happens if it comes back? So... You have to figure out your own personality. This is self-awareness, okay? Because we are all motivated in different ways. We all, did you know? We're all different people. I love our differences. I really do. I, I'm fascinated by people who are completely different than me because I'm just leaning in. I want to know what makes you tick. What, how do you think? How do you approach problems? How do you solve them? How are you, how are you influenced by the people around you and the culture and the religion and the everything that you grew up in? I love 
learning about that. But I also know we all different personality types. We all respond differently to different motivators. Some people respond better with reward and praise and affirmation. And some people respond better to the impending doom of negative reinforcements. So rather than going after pleasure and or reward, they just avoid the negative consequences or negative reinforcements. So we all have different ways of being motivated, avoiding bad and pursuing good. There's different ways to also be motivated. I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist here, but just kind of drawing from general conclusions of how people are motivated. If someone were to, to so if someone were to come to you with the top three tasks that you are avoiding in your business, and let's just be honest, there are things you are avoiding in your business. I'm just going to pause for this awkward moment of silence so that you can actually take stock of the top three things you're avoiding. If someone were to come to you with the top three tasks in your business that you are avoiding, what would motivate you to get them done? What is your personality style? Do you do better with positive rewards for accomplishing tasks? Or is a threat to your happy existence more of a motivator? Now, here are some examples of that. The three overdue things in your business that need to get done by the end of the week. You've already put them off for two weeks. Okay, so that we're setting the stage here. What appeals to you more? Just think about these things for a second. What appeals to you more? If these three things get done, I will give myself a reward, maybe a special dinner, a day off, a spa day, new shoes, extra round of golf, uh, whatever that is, whatever is your favorite thing or one of your favorite things. Or if I don't get these things done, it'll cost me an entire day of yard work or I'll have to send $100 to my worst enemy or I can't participate in my favorite hobby until these things get done. So how are you motivated? Which one of these things appeals more to you? Because we're all motivated in different ways, whether by penalty or by reward. Think about your past. Think about um, things that you look forward to and the things that you look forward to if you weren't able to do them because of these tasks that are on your list. Because we are going to jump into the why. We are going to jump into the reasons in a few moments. But first, we want to know how are we motivated? See, I personally am more motivated by positive results. If you tell me, hey, Kristen, get these three things done and you can have the rest of the day to do whatever you want to do. I'm literally working to the bone to do that. Because then I can do whatever I want. I feel free. I feel at peace. I feel accomplished when I get things done. But there are things I don't love doing that I still are re responsible for. Let's just be honest. We all have tasks in our lives that we're responsible for doing that we don't like doing. And they all have some sort of result, consequence, whatever you want to call it. You don't do the dishes. They pile up and then there's no clean dishes to use and things start to smell and get crusty and gross. And then how are you going to get a fork to eat your piece of cake on a plate that's not clean? Right. So there's always a result, a consequence, a um, something that happens negatively or positively by the choices we make. Right. So we have to figure out what appeals more to them. If you say, hey, Kristen, if you get those dishes done, then you can have two hours to go thrifting or go to an estate sale or um, work on your jewelry projects. I am motivated by peace and freedom to do what I please. Now, if you told me that if you aren't going to, if, if you don't get these dishes done, then you're not going to be able to play cornhole for this whole week. That would like make me more mad than anything. It's like, how dare you? Who says, you know, especially if you work for yourself, it's really hard to, to get a grip on these things. But figure out which one appeals more to you and make a list of either penalties or rewards for doing things that you're not excited about doing. Now, most people, productivity people and things like that, I'm no expert at this, by the way. I am just letting you guys know what works for me and what has worked for many of my clients. Um, another piece of that puzzle for motivation is accountability. 
You do really, really want something, but you just struggle to take action. And some people are motivated by accountability. Hey, I know so-and-so is going to ask me and the guilt or shame of not doing it is something that actually motivates you. So be it. There's nothing wrong with any of this motivation, but motivation is like a feeling that doesn't last forever. So you have to continually feed it one way or the other. Other key factor in motivation is real. It's the purpose and the reason you started your business in the first place. There was a reason besides needing more money that motivated you to do this work in the beginning. You started a business. And even if it was first because I want to make more money, there's a hidden reason behind that. So I'm gonna go through some of these and say, okay, maybe some of these things have motivated you in the beginning. I wanna make more money because, or I started my business because. Maybe it was to do something more exciting. You were getting bored with your same old, same old, or maybe you're an empty, an empty nester. Your kids just went off to college or the last one moved out and you're like, I, I, I don't know what to do with my time. I have all this time on my hands and I wanna spend it doing something. Maybe it was really to have more control over your income potential. I mean, sometimes you might be in a job that you love, but the income potential is, it is what it is. There's just not a whole lot of room to grow or move up or be promoted. It's just kind of like a job I love, but this is kind of the salary and I get my 1% raise every year and that <laughs> inflation is rising at 7%. So I'm already in the hole and I like what I do, but I'm not making enough money to do the things I want to do. Maybe it was to have a more flexible schedule. Maybe your circumstances or life has changed in some way to need you. You know, maybe you're caring for an ailing parent or a sick child or um, recently had a divorce and you're a single parent or whatever your situation is, you might need a more flexible schedule. You want to work from home. You want to gain control over um, your, your income status. You want to leave a nine to five job that you actually hate. Some people hate their job. Some people love it. Maybe you want to follow a dream that is all your own. Perhaps you wanted to start this because you are, you want to be more creative and use your talents and skills in a way that makes you feel excited. Whatever made you land in this place, that is your key motivator. And you know what? It changes over time. What motivated me in 2014 to open mommy income is not the same as what motivates me to get here every single day and produce podcasts and talk to you guys and lean into you and help you succeed. There's different motivators at different times. So that's okay. It may change over time, but there will always be a reason that you wanted this as opposed to the alternative. And maybe you haven't taken the time recently to explore the alternative. Maybe you're so far removed. Maybe you've been doing this for 10 years and you forgot why you wanted to do it. This is me. Recently, I've had a bout of burnout. I don't know if you can hear that in the tone of the podcast. I'm, I, I love you guys and I'm so thankful that you give me this platform to be able to talk with you. And I know I say talk with you because um, this podcast, it seems one way, but I'm always envisioning that I'm sitting here with you and talking to you and talking to myself. It's a little selfish because I need it for me. I need these, these motivational speeches sometimes for myself because I struggle the same with the motivation that you do. But I have to consider the alternative. If not this, then what? If this Amazon business is too hard or you're stumbling all over everything and you're really, really frustrated, what is the alternative? Because we all have choices. I don't have to sell on Amazon. I don't have to do podcasts on mommy income. What's the alternative? And is that better? And is that going to get you to your goals? Do you even have goals? Was it just like, I just got to make more money and I found out that this e-commerce thing is going to work. So I'm going to give it a try. Well, that's okay. But if you truly think that it was to make more money, I'm going to challenge you to dig a little deeper. 
Okay, we're going to do this right now. I really hope you have a pen and paper and that you're willing to work with me here. I know some people like my friend Wendy in Florida, who's always walking her dog when she listens to the podcast. Wendy, do this exercise when you get home. This is right for you, right? This is for everyone. But if you're driving or, you know, whatever else, then I can encourage you to come back to this and just take a 15 minute hustle and do these exercises. Ask yourself these questions, write them down. You're like, okay, Kristen, in this, you know, 20, 2023, does anybody even write anything down anymore? Y'all, I do. I got sticky notes everywhere. I got papers everywhere. I, I'm a tactile, hands-on. I have to write things. There's something connection with the hand and brain when you write stuff down. Um, it's been proven. I don't have all the studies and statistics. I just know that I've read that before. <laughs> but if you wanted and needed more money, why? Why? Why do you want or need more money? If that really is like, oh, I'm not really motivated by anything else. I don't care what I sell. I just want to make money. Why do you need more money? What do you think more money will do for you? What is the benefit to having more money? What do you think you will feel if you have more money? What will change in your life if you had more money? And it's more money for a time or money consistently? These are really, really serious questions to consider. Most people, just so you know, most people are not considering this. They just put their head down, work, 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 get the money, work, 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 get the money, and then come to the end of their life and realize, wow, I worked a lot for a lot of money, but I never had time to spend it because I was too busy working to even enjoy it. Did I even enjoy the process? Did I hope that someday I will retire and then enjoy my money? I'm going to challenge you. You know why? Because I love you. I do. I desire your highest good, your highest success, and you have more potential than you're giving yourself credit for. So what do you think money will do for you? How do you think you will feel when you have more? How much more? The reality is you want to feel something at the end of the day. Lack of money makes you feel something. Let's be honest. Lack of money makes us feel insecure. It makes us feel restricted. It makes us feel frustrated, annoying. Maybe feelings of failure come in. Maybe feelings of of missing out on things. There's a feeling involved with lack So if there's a feeling involved with lack, then there's a feeling involved with abundance. What do you want to feel at the end of the day, business, job, relationships, everything? Is it security? Is it relief from stress, pressure, freedom, control? See, money carries this illusion that all things will be be better when there's more of it, right? Just let that sink in for a second. Money carries the illusion that all things will be better if there was more of it. But let's play pretend for just a second. Y'all wanna play pretend with me? (laughs) Too bad, you're sitting here learning, listening, so you have to. (laughs) Pretend that all of a sudden, your salary doubles. Now, we're not talking about Mega Millions lottery winning money. We're just talking about your salary doubling. So whatever you make right now, take home pay, whether you're an entrepreneur or you work at a job or you do both, whatever that income level, we all like are going to be doing our taxes too, if you haven't done them already. Um, What is your net income for 2022? Let's just say we double that. I'm saying net income because, you know, the money that's coming in and actually going into your bank account, uh, not what Uncle Sam takes and what you're putting in your 401, if you're putting anything in a 401 or whatever, your, yeah, your salary just doubled. We're playing pretend, remember? Your salary just doubled. Double the current income you're making right now. Just let that sink in. Think about it. Your current salary doubles. We're not talking about money sitting on the beach and retiring and not doing any more work. Because 
I would venture to say that even if some of us salary doubled, it's still a salary. Meaning you have to work for that salary, but all of a sudden the work that you're doing has doubled, uh, the money has doubled for the work that you're doing. Most of us would still have to work for a living. It's not going to be life-changing money where you quit the job and never have to do anything and you just sit on the beach all day, right? But we're doubling our pay from its current state. It's hard to play pretend and it's hard to imagine, but if you do, what does life look like? What would actually change in your life if your income doubled? What would change in your business? What do you think this would do for you? Now, interestingly, interestingly, we just went through this exercise. I am in the um, Goldman and Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program, and we recently did this exercise where they told us to envision our business in, in three to five years and write kind of like just what you could use markers, crayons, like a, a chart, like numbers, things like that, goals. What would you like to see your business look like in this many years? And then as we were doing this, they'd walk around and they'd give us they, they gave us $50,000 checks. And they said, okay, here's your $50,000 check. You have six months to spend every dime. Name the top five things you're spending money on. Name the top five things you're spending money on. What would change in your business? What would you do more of? What would you do less of? Would you hire someone? And then as we're writing this stuff down, about three minutes later, they come and they hand us a bigger check. And they say, now what? You still have to spend all of this money, $500,000 within six months. What are the top five things you're spending money on? You have to spend it all gone. That's what the exercise was. You can't just be like, oh, I'm reserving this. And then they came back and said, now you have $5 million check. Well, these are fake checks, of course, but I kept them because I was like, oh, I've never had a $5 million check before. So I think I'm going to keep this fake one and just pretend it's real. Um, but reality is, what did you say at that point? Well, some people asked, I, meaning one of them, this is all full disclosure, honesty, y'all. <laughs> I was like, if you handed me a check for $5 million, I'd retire. I'm not going to grow my business with it. I'm going to retire. And they're like, why? Did your goals change the moment that we handed you money? Is money your only motivator for running your business? What about your clients? And I thought, you're right. I wouldn't just retire. I wouldn't. Now, I didn't think about retiring when they gave me a $50,000 check. So that's kind of proof to show you that it's not just the money that motivates. I actually care about my clients. I care about people succeeding. That's the reason I started Mommy Income to begin with. It wasn't motivated by money. It was motivated by help and support. Because when I was starting my business, I didn't have that. I didn't have it in abundance. I had it a little bit here and there. I'm not saying I wasn't supported. I'm not saying there wasn't great men out there. And when I say men, I really mean men. There wasn't a lot of women teaching. Now, this is not a man versus woman thing. So don't, you know, take this to the bank with that. But we have a need to, of understanding, a desire for understanding. We want people to be like us and understand our perspective. And so whether we're from a different culture, a different gender, a different race, a different reality, a different income level, we all want to be understood and feel like relatable. And I found it really difficult in the beginning to relate to some older men that were the main breadwinners of their family that didn't have young children under feet to take care of and run a business at the same time. It didn't seem relatable to me that this gentleman these gentlemen that were teaching in the Amazon space at the time, rewind, this is many, many years ago, at least 10, 12 years ago. Um, I didn't see any women really teaching how to start and run businesses on Amazon or e-commerce um, with young children under feet. This is AKA mommy income. This is the reason mommy's income <laughs> was started because there's no one else there like me talking about the same struggles that I had with it that they didn't have. 
It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just different. It's just a different relatable way. And so because of mommy income was started like that, money wouldn't make it go away. Sure, it would help. But I still want to do what I'm doing. I'm still motivated by encouraging and teaching and training and tough love and showing you that taking action, your dreams are possible. That's what motivates me. Here's the hard truth. Even if somebody doubled your salary tomorrow, the hard truth is those top three things that you've been putting off in your business, they'll still be there. And even if your salary doubles, again, not enough to go retire on the beach and not do anything because a salary presupposes that you're working for the salary. So this is part of our pretend game with our boundaries, right? We do have boundaries. Would all of a sudden have more money motivate you to do all those tasks? Probably not. Most likely not. Someone handed you a check for double your salary and said, this is your new salary for 2023. Does having more money motivate you to do those tasks you've been putting off? It doesn't. Now you could now you could afford to outsource those tasks that you hate or don't know how to do to someone else. But here's the fun reality. Even if you say, okay, I'm gonna hire out all the things I hate, great. You still have to develop a plan, a process, and train that person to do the things you want them to do. So before we jump into the idea that more money equals more freedom, I beg to differ. So then if money is not the motivator, then what is? See, they say new levels, new devils, right? More money, more problems, more power, more responsibility. And those things can be true. And our tendency to procrastinate and our lack of motivation doesn't come from how many commas are in our bank account. Here's the bottom line, y'all. They come from fear. Procrastination comes from fear. Let me prove it. We don't do things because they're hard. We don't do new things because we're hard. We don't know how to do new things and we fear it will take too much time to learn or too much time to train or too much time. So we don't do them. We don't do things we don't enjoy because who the heck wants to spend their time on things they don't enjoy, but they're necessary. So now what? We don't find enough value in them to make time to do them. That is one of the real realities. If you really want to peel back the layers, if you really want to say, well, you don't do that because you don't want to do it and you don't want to do it because you don't care about it and you don't care about it because you don't think the result, either positive or negative, is going to be valuable to you. We don't see them as helpful or harmful enough to take action to change them. That's really the truth. We're procrastinating, we're putting things off because we don't see the item, the item to do on the list as harmful enough or helpful enough to take action. So how do we stop all this? Because can I get an amen from someone in the back that feels me here? I am a pro procrastinator, professional <laughs> when I say pro. I put the pro in procrastination. But I'm tired of it. Because there are times where I've had way more money. And those top three things that I kept putting off, I still put off. So I had to really dig deep to be like, okay, when I'm in this Goldman and Sachs program and they're challenging me saying, money is not enough to motivate you. They were right. Of course, they didn't put it like that. They said, grow your business, here's $50,000. I looked at it more of the motivation, a motivation check. What would you do in your business differently if you had more money? But then let's play the if then game, because honestly, we want to stop this. We want to stop this. It is holding us back from our dreams. Self-sabotage is really what procrastination is. It's fear. So let's play the what if game. I know we're playing a lot of pretend today, right? Pretend games, what if games. Yeah, we're just here for all the games. <laughs> 
ask yourself this, that top thing that you're putting off in your business, you know you are, maybe it's your accounting and bookkeeping because taxes are coming and you're terrified to look at your numbers in the eye because you're scared maybe you didn't make money. Maybe your spouse is going to be like, ah, we have another problem here because you were supposed to make money and you didn't. I don't know. Just making this stuff up here. But go with me on this, okay? If I don't do these tasks, then blank will happen. Thinking of what is the worst that can happen if I don't do these tasks. If I don't do my taxes, my bookkeeping, my accounting for the year and do my taxes, the IRS will come after me eventually and take all my money and garnish my wages and take my house and take everything I own. That would be worst case scenario. And it's true and it happens, right? But if I take care of these tasks, then blank will be my result. So instead of doing the task, do this exercise first. Look it in the eye and be like, I am putting off taxes. If I take care of these tas taxes, what will be my result? Number one, I'm obeying the law that I'm supposed to do. I have to file my taxes and pay Uncle Sam. That's just how it is. Number two, I won't have to stress out and worry about taxes anymore. Number three, I'll have a very clear view of how my business did this year in terms of profit, loss, sales, revenues, all the different expenses. What's the best that can happen? Number one, the best that can happen is I learned something about my business, that it's actually doing better than I thought. What are the benefits of getting these tasks done? Because I'm looking at my list here and I'm like, what are the benefits of doing these things? Well, <laughs> You guys, full disclosure here, I'm going to read you some. This is my, this is not just my business, this is not my business task list. This is just like the, the running list of things that I really need to take care of in the next week or two. And y'all, this has been on my desk for two weeks already. So I'm just being fully disclosed and honest here. A lot of it is organization. Like I'm a hot mess. I'm not organized. I'm working on it. I'm working towards it. Hence the list here. Um, I need to order a patch for my daughter for her jacket. <clears throat> it's just one thing that I need to get done. It literally will take five minutes, but somehow it's still just on the list. Why? Because it's not a priority. It's not really a major thing. It's just this little thing that needs to get done eventually. Um, and I have some Amazon returns to make. I mean, literally tasks that take a few minutes. It's just a pain to go in there, request it. And then am I going to the store? Are they picking it up? Am I taking it to Kohl's to have it returned? Uh, it's a pain. Um, I need to clean off the kitchen table papers, you know, AKA the mail that piles up that we have to then sort and file and things like that. Um, and I have a couple of gifts and cards that are sitting here on my desk that, that y'all that have been there since December that I just haven't filled out and want to send. It's like, oh, I got this card for so-and-so and I just haven't sent it out. Y'all, I still send out handwritten notes and cards. I just feel like it's such a lost art these days to see handwriting, to see that somebody took the time to get a card, write in it and send it to you now to where in a day and age where I could literally text you the same message. It's so different now to literally go to the mailbox and see a bright red envelope and open it up and it's addressed to you. And someone took time to hand write that, put a stamp on it and send it you, to you the mail. That is like love in the mailbox, y'all. Just saying. Years ago, it was just another thing, but now it's a lost art. Nah, that's neither here nor there. What's the best that can happen? What is the benefit for taking care of these things? And what are the consequences if you don't? The reality is there probably isn't any. Ordering this patch for my daughter, there's no consequence if I don't do that other than her being the squeaky wheel. It's like, mom, did you get my patch? Did you get my patch? Did you get my patch? There's no benefit to me necessarily to doing that. It's just a consequence if I don't hearing the squeaky wheel and then she doesn't have the patch in time to do what she needs to do with it. Consequence. Haven't done it yet because there isn't a real change in benefit or consequence for me not doing it. This is just real evaluation. So you have to figure out what you value most. This is like deep therapy here, y'all. Okay, it's not really therapy. I've never really actually been to therapy often. So I don't really know all that kind of stuff. I've been to a few therapy sessions. I don't have like a long-term therapist that I see. Um, and there's no harm or shame and actually um, love the idea of that. And I hope that most people are doing that if that's what they need. But to figure out what is the most valuable to you is what will motivate you. If you believe there's no real value in certain tasks, but you just think you should, why? Should, why? 
You won't do them even for money, even for more money. As a matter of fact, if someone says they're going to double your salary, your major temptation is to do less. Well, shoot, I don't have to work as hard. I got more money. Not true. Because you got to keep it. And if you do what you've always done, you always get what you always got. And even if you doubled your salary, those tasks are still waiting for you in your business. You still have to handle your Amazon returns, like it or not, no matter if you make $10 million or $10. Somebody has to do it. And if it's not you, you have to have enough money to hire it or train it or teach it to someone else because the things don't go away just because you don't want to do them. So I'm not just here to preach at you and talk at you and make you feel bad or make you feel, oh yeah, I'm totally like that. Look, we're here to solve problems and get moving and get motivated. Why? Because your dreams, your goals, even your money and financial goals, your financial freedom is worth the work. It's worth this. Your competition doesn't care. They're not working on this. They're working their fingers to the bone, not enjoying their lives. I'm trying to get you to do both. Work hard, play harder. That's why we work, right? I mean, please tell me that's why you work. It's not just to survive. We need to survive. We need to put food on the table and pay the mortgage and take care of the children or the pets or the whatever. But hopefully we're enjoying not only our work, but our life outside of work. So here are the action steps that you need to go through this process. I'm all about action steps. I really hope you're sitting somewhere where you can actually do this right now, or at least write it down so that you can do it later. Name the top three things you are continually putting off in your business. Write them down. For each one, write an if then statement using the examples that I just mentioned. I started this business so that I could blank. Now fill in the blank with your why, your big dream, your big goal. I started this business so that I didn't have to leave my home and my children to earn an income that was necessary for the survival of my family. That was mine. That was why I started my business in 2003, 20 years ago, I started a business so that I could stay at home with my children and be with them and still make money. Now, that's your statement. If I do this, that's your if then, right? If I don't do these tasks, then blank will happen. That's your worst case scenario. If I take care of these tasks, then blank will be my result. What's the best that can happen? What is going to be the result if you do the task? Because I want you to fill this sentence in and put it somewhere and let that motivate you. I started this business so that I could blank. And if that is make more money, then I'm going to ask you to, before you say make more money, say, why do you want more money? What do you think more money will give you? What is your why, your reason, your purpose? And I know this is thrown out many, many times in different podcasts and different places. And there's a reason. Because obviously money is not enough to motivate people. There are very, very, very wealthy people in the world that don't have to work another day in their life, but why do they do it? Why do they still go to work? Why do they still do things? Fulfillment, enjoyment, to pay it forward, to give resources to others, to do fun and amazing things, to have freedom to do whatever you please, to have your big dream, for me to snowbird and buy a house someplace in a warm, sunny South where there's ocean for the winter. That is literally my why, one of my motivations. And then write this statement. Today, I will take one small step to get closer to that dream. So that is your if then statement. If I take care of these tasks, blank will be my result. What is your result? Confidence, freedom, peace, more money. If I 
research another bundle. I will have more bundles to sell in my store. When I have more bundles to sell in my store. I make more profit. When I make more profit, I have more options. That's really what profit does. It gives you more options in your life. Options to go on vacation, options to take a day off, options to go to Disney, options to take a whole summer off and do whatever you want. So figure out what motivates you and get closer to that. No matter what, money won't be the only motivator if you want to continue doing hard things. We will negotiate ourselves to death to not do something that we don't believe is going to be valuable to us. You got to focus on the reason you want the things that you want. What do you want to feel at the end of the day? Take one step closer to that. Now, if you want more about this, it's in my book, Dream Big, Step Small. You can buy it on Amazon. I will send you a, a, a signed copy. You can buy one from my website. You can listen to it on Audible if you like to listen. Get an Audible credit and listen to it on Audible. But the whole idea is spelled out in there, including these types of action steps for you to take and discover. Because once you figure out what really, really motivates you, no one can take that from you. You are unstoppable at that point. What do you want to feel at the end of the day? Take one small step towards that. And y'all, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing right now. I thank you for listening to Amazon Files podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe and leave a review for this podcast. Other people need to hear these messages. Some, if you've been motivated or inspired by any of my podcasts, share it with a friend. There's someone out there that needs to hear these words. Someone out there. I call them keys to unlocking prisons for other people. There's someone else trapped in the same thinking that we were trapped in once upon a time. And these are the keys to help them unlock that prison and break free from those old thought patterns. So please share this podcast with someone, even if you think they're not a business owner or they're not an Amazon business owner. Could they get some value from being motivated in some sort of way? Please share and subscribe and leave us a review and let us know that you love this podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.